Hey everybody, Mobile Gamers Unite here with another FTC compliant vid for adults. So we are in the world of Landgrisser today. We did get a limited banner. Let's have a look at these warlocks real quick. Um, let's see. Actually, what did I want to do first? Yeah, we can do a couple summons. Why not? Because I did manage to get Rainforce. Um, I don't have Betty. I didn't get her. We'll try to do a couple pulls, but I don't think she's really that important here. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out with like what's going on with the Yu Yu Hakusho collab. Um, like, I don't have a final word on that. I don't know. Maybe it's coming, maybe it's not. So I want to hold off on going all in on this, even though this is a limited banner. I feel like I do have uh, the more powerful character already and the one that I'm going to want to play with. As far as Betty is concerned, from what I've managed to gather about her, I don't think she's a necessity for me. Um, I've been working on a few different tanks, and I think I got that covered. So I think most people will agree with me that if you actually pull Rainforce, um, you're good on Betty. He is a completely different character. He is a badass assassin that has all sorts of nifty abilities. Um, he seems like he's going to be really, really fun to play. So I am happy with him. Uh, like, if we're not getting you Hakusho right now, at least we managed to get this. They gave us an interesting character to play with and build. And he looks really cool, too. Totally digging his sprite. All in all, um, I'm very happy with his kit. I can tell you guys that right now. And a while ago, and, and this was a while ago, I was talking about how nobody gets to use the Samurais that I actually want to play. And eventually, they will come out with an awesome SSR character that will be able to use those Samurais. And people were like, yeah, man, keep dreaming. I knew it was going to happen eventually, and it did. So he can use the little samurai guys so um, that works really well for him because they don't take a penalty in close quarters combat and they can uh, they can have a ranged attack too um, another thing I already noticed about Mr. Rainforce himself is a few times there he was attacking the enemy hero by himself um, Obviously, his troops still had to attack the troops, but his attack went straight to the enemy hero. So he can kind of assassinate people like that. And I don't know if that has something to do with um, his critical being so high. I did work on a crit build on him. There's nothing um, like in his skills or in his talent that says that he gets to target heroes like that. But I've watched him do it quite a few times. Maybe somebody can shed some light on that. We did get some upgrades. Uh, the whole game got upgraded. We got new troops added that look really cool and nifty. Um, and there's some sort of awakening system now for heroes. I haven't even really got to stick my nose into all that yet. I looked over it. Uh, really, I pulled this hero pretty quickly, and I figured I would put out some information about him because... Uh, he does appear to be a very gnarly character. I got mine to... He's right under 4,000, and I already ran him through Guild War. I spent the morning running him around, seeing what I could do with him. Um, I will tell you, I was very surprised to see that um, how much movement they put into his kit. This guy can literally move like nine blocks up and attack somebody and teleport himself over there. Um, he gets to put stacks on himself, and he gets to hold seven stacks, so that's pretty impressive. Once he has those seven stacks, his ability triggers, and he gets to act again. Now, he gets each stack from doing damage, so he doesn't have to be in combat to get a stack. He doesn't have to kill somebody to get a stack. All this guy has to do is inflict some damage on, well, his enemy. And considering he has a bunch of uh, straight line AOE attacks, uh, he can he can manipulate that. So he can hit like three or four people in a turn, and he can get four stacks. Um, and then maybe next turn somebody attacks him, he gets a stack from that. So he's up to five. 
Uh, and on the second turn, as long as he uses one of his AoEs, which one of them only costs one skill point and only has a one turn cooldown, and if you score a crit, it it gets minus to that uh, cooldown. So you get to use it every turn as long as you crit with it. So as long as he can throw that again and he can hit two people, he will have uh, seven of his stacks built up. As soon as he gets seven stacks, he gets to act again. And after he's done acting again, and mind you, remember at this point, he has seven stacks um, maxed out. I think it's like 21% to all of his stats except for hit points. And then he gets to act again. Uh, he gets to attack somebody, and after he does that and probably kills them, he gets teleported to the nearest ally. And you know this is coming, so you can obviously figure out who the nearest ally is, and you can kind of move him out of combat so that um, Rainforce gets teleported over there after he gets done assassinating somebody, and he stays out of harm's way. So, um, you know, there's different... There's different paths I think you can take with him. You can try to really bank on that um, talent where he collects seven of those stacks and then gets to assassinate somebody. Or you can kind of set him up to just um, really keep doing a ton of AoE, getting crits. Um, he can be a uh, long-ranged outside attacker. He can irritate people with long-ranged AoEs. And then when he gets those stacks up, he can go on the inside for a direct attack, and he can travel a long distance to make that attack happen. And then he can just get out of dodge after he kills somebody. Um, so that's the thing with him. He's very interesting to play. I really think his big enemy is time, because he is going to take some time to, uh, to power up his stack ability so that he can get his assassinate uh, talent to proc. So he's going to need to hit some enemies and get those stacks up to be able to do that assassination stuff. But um, if you can bind your time with him, if you can just keep him on the outside and just kind of keep poking and prodding people, he will eventually get that assassinate ability. And then you can kind of pick and choose who you want to use it on. Um, your enemy is not going to be too happy with that. I can see him being very useful for PvP because he also displaces the enemy. With one of his moves, I believe it is like a 4-5 turn cooldown ability, um, he gets to hit everybody in a straight line, and as long as he hits two or more enemies, he switches them. So they get switched in a, uh, a random order. But what's really cool about that in PvP is this guy can effectively... Um, he can run up on the enemy and he can say, oh look, I can line up a tank and a healer. Uh, I can do my attack and it'll teleport me all the way uh, to the other side of the, the tabletop, which is cool. But also I get to switch their places. If you can, um, in PvP, if you can switch a tank with a healer, by God, you just won, right? Because now um, their healer is where their tank was. And you can probably finish off their healer next turn with another unit. Or, if uh, Rainforce is switching these two characters on the same turn that he's getting that seventh stack of his, then after he does the whole switcheroo, he gets to act again, and he gets to teleport out of there. So you can, you can displace a healer uh, and a tank. You can swap their, their positions, and then you can act again and kill one of them. And then you can hightail it out of there. So I see him being very useful in PvP. And I think a lot of people are going to go for that. Um, we'll go over his items and everything that I put on him. I am currently working on a few different builds for him just to try to kind of see what works the best. I think we're about done doing pulls here because Betty's not really like that important to me. You know what, but people have been asking for pull vids. They want pull vids. Here's some pull vids. This is how I do my pulls. I do singles. It takes forever, and that's why your boy doesn't really do too many pull vids anymore. Because right now, we could be looking at this awesome new character who kind of reminds me of Alucard. I just feel like I should at least try to pull a couple yellows. A couple mellow yellows. Come on. Come on, buddy. So I did plan on throwing all these pulls on Yu Yu Hakusho. 
I don't know. I I've been hearing <laughs> I've been hearing some bad talks about people not sure if we're gonna get Yu Yu Hakusho. I don't know. I'd like to stay positive. Like, how can you mess up Yu Yu Hakusho? I've wanted this so bad. I obviously had you know a ton of tickets and crystal saved up. Um, but you know, checking out this new character, I was really interested. And he looks really cool. Um, oh, th that's the other thing with him too. One of my favorite things, uh, the Strat Masters team, he's perfect for it. Here's the thing, I already have a Leon that I'm invested into. I already have an Altamuler that I'm invested into. A lot of times I will run Leon with Altamuler with a Strat buff. He can go with them and he can pull a lot of nifty crap off. Like, uh, you know, you go up to an enemy, again, he can displace them and he can uh, switch some people around and then Leon can go in and kill somebody and like your whole party can retreat because Leon can move after he attacks uh, and obviously this guy can uh, pretty much just teleport out of combat as long as you use him right so I think with uh, Leon Altamuller as a fusion buffer and Rainforce that can just be a really really killer strat masters party so I will be building Rainforce. There's just way too much nifty stuff that he can do um, for me not to build him up and put runestones into him and stuff. So I only have um, I only have one side of his skill tree done. I do have to put some runestones into him. He is going to be worth it. Um, the attack that I'm missing right now is his Eclipse attack, and it looks pretty damn gnarly, I must say. Alright, so we're going to go over all that. I just wanted to at least pull some yellows. It would have been nice if they would have, you know, thrown me a free Betty. Come on. An extra Guild War character is always nice to have, right? A lot of times I can get these yellows to, uh, to fall in waves. I can get a couple yellows. Let's see if this is one of those times. But let's see, all in all, it took me, I think it took me almost 50 pulls to get Rainforce. And obviously now I'm just kind of sitting around wasting pulls. We can say we pulled for Betty. And this is how committed I am to you guys. If I could just pull Betty right now, I would review her for you as well. So that we have a pretty good idea of what these characters look like and, and how they work. Um, this is going to be the last one. You know what, here we, we'll, get, we'll try to get one more yellow and we'll be done. Um, honestly, I don't even think I would build up Betty right now. I don't have the resources. I need to run Guild War a little bit more. I invested as much as I could into Rainforce today just to get him to at least like 4,000 power level to run him around and try him out. Um, let's see. The Samurais that I've been running with him, I do believe they're level 7. They are very effective. Uh, it's a good thing I've kind of been building them up on the side for Kirikaz. Oh, come on. Really? Can we snag another yellow? Can we get a yellow with that yellow? Twins? Twins? Come on. I've already thrown a lot at this banner anyway. She has a limited character, and I do like to collect those. Uh, limited characters tend to be pretty powerful too. Here's my question. I don't know what they're going to do with it. Like, our game's going to be totally different than Japan if Yu Yu Hakusho doesn't come out because uh, those characters get to transform. They get to do all sorts of stuff. So they were really supposed to change the meta up for us. So I really don't know where this game stands right now. I'm not going to be too happy myself personally if if they just decide to get rid of Yu Yu Hakusho on Global. I've just been waiting for too long for that. So we'll have to see. And here's our last yellow. Can we get, can we get, can we get twins with it? I think saving about 40 summons isn't a bad idea. I don't know what's to come. This could also be a dirty trick <laughs> to get us to, uh, you know, they could pop a Yu Yu Hakusho banner right after this, and I'd have to pull on it. So, for now, I'm just going to be happy with that. Let's look at Homeboy, who we pulled earlier today. Here he is, Mr. Rainforce himself. 
weighing in at 3,812 power, but do not let that fool you. I did put the Seductress Dagger on him. This thing has 13% attack. Uh, the Monkey King's Vest, obviously crit is a big deal for this guy. If we look at his stats, his skill is an S, his attack is an A. The reason I think his attack isn't an S stat is just because it would be too much. As far as skill go, he starts with Sonic Blade. It's a one turn cooldown. It only does 0.18 damage, but um, upon landing a critical hit, uh, the skill's cooldown is reduced by one turn. So if he scores a crit with this, he just gets to throw it again next turn. All in all, this is very solid, right? It's got a six block range. You can reach out and tag people with it. This is going to help him farm his otherworldly force, which is his talent. Um, because he can hit multiple people each turn with this, and he can stack up his otherworldly force. The magic number is seven. Once you have seven stacks, um, you can take an extra action. And after taking this action, you are teleported next to the nearest ally, and all otherworldly force effects are removed from you, and you have to start stacking all from scratch. Um, and we already went over this, I explained it to you while I was doing summons, but he can use this to farm this, and this only costs one skill point, Sonic Blade. For another two skill points, you can bring Ruthless. This really helps with him because um, crit, crit damage increases by 20%. This guy's always going to be critting. Look at his S stat, right? So you might as well emphasize on those crits. Um, and then, let's see, when dealing critical damage in battle, all damage taken is decreased by 30%. That can help him too if he's being attacked. Something just to take some of the icing off the top. All right. This is Star Stab. This has a seven block range. Uh, it's got a three turn cooldown. Um, and remember, this guy can run around with, with Jizzeroff and use his mythical realms uh, fusion and he can shave down uh, cooldowns off of his skills with that. But um, pretty much... Attacks all enemies in a straight line, dealing 0.33 AoE damage, so the damage is better on this one, of course. When attacking, teleports to the furthest point in the skill's casting radius, which is seven blocks away. If this, attacks, if this attack hits two or more enemies, this skill randomly swaps the positions of enemies hit. That's awesome. All right, And then, of course, as long as you get your seventh a whirly force point from that, you get to act again, you get to assassinate, and then you get to be teleported uh, to your nearest ally. This just makes him amazing. So these are the skills I got for him. He also has Sly Stride. Crit chance increased by 10% after eliminating an enemy, gain chance to move another three blocks. This really helps him just be able to hit and run away without having to trigger his assassin ability. So there's all sorts of different builds for this guy for what you want him to do. He's always going to be a nasty attacker and a bad, badass provoker, right? He's going to be able to hit people from six, seven blocks away, plus his movement. Um, you know, and then when the time's right, after he's taken enough jabs at a couple people at a time here, um, and he stacks up his otherworldly force, then bam, he's all set to do his assassination move. And that's really how this guy's going to work, and he is really fun to play. I've already ran him a lot, had a lot of fun with him. Uh, Thor's Necklace, I put on him because I'd like to see him do some fixed damage after um, after he is done with battle. Uh, this helps him get some killing blows and stuff. Now, this guy does attack like a rogue, at least in this class. He has a two attack range. So... Um, I like the Seductress Dagger on him right now because as long as he crits, I can do some more fixed damage from that. But the Extreme Magic Bow is obviously a very good choice for this guy with the Samurais. If somebody attacks him and he has the Extreme Magic Bow, his damage isn't going to be reduced and your Samurai's damage isn't going to be reduced. So he's going to be able to hit hard, right? And every time he's doing damage, even if he's retaliating, he's going to get some of his talent stacks. So remember, 7 is the magic number you're trying to get to. But all in all, that's what I think about this guy. And like I said, um, oh yeah, he also gets Yales, so he can be quite the assassin for Yales. So there's a lot this guy can do. Um, I'm of course going to be running him with uh, uh, faction buffer uh, 
How did I get forget Alta Mueller's name? My goodness. And Leanne. Am I going to forget Leanne Grisser's name too? Jeez, Vlad. Have another cup of coffee. Uh, sorry, everyone. Been a busy day. I'm actually thinking about a lot of stuff. So here we are. This is what this bad mamma jamma is looking like. All right. So make sure everybody to get your skill or get your character level up to 61 instead of 60. You're going to get a little bit more stats. Go through and do that with, you know, all your characters that you have maxed out. Um, let's see. Soldiers, am I missing anything else? No, really, I'm going to run the samurai on this guy. Um, that just has been working the best for me. So I don't really think... Okay, yeah, he... Oh, wait, that's right. He gets the cyborg vessel. Is that right? Yeah, it's a cyborg vessel. When attacking, can engage in ranged attacks along with the hero, and soldiers deal 10% more damage. Okay, so actually, this is pretty gnarly right here. Um, these guys are infantry, so if you want him to have an infantry, an infantry troop with him, blah, and, you know, just... I'm assuming these guys are going to be a little bit tougher, maybe, than the samurai. Yeah, because the samurais are level 7... These guys uh, aren't leveled up yet at all. So there's something for me to look forward to, the cyborg vessels. Obviously, if I'm running him right now, I'm still going to use a samurai because they are level 7 already. And they work very well with him. Um, but this obviously gives him something to upgrade to. And I can't wait to try that out. Um, as far as his skills go, I don't think I'm going to do anything with Sniper. This really isn't going to give him anything except for maybe just some uh, mastery stats but I am going to go down to swordsman and then sword saint this is what's going to give him eclipse teleports to the uh, skill casting location so again here is another skill that's going to let him teleport and then attack uh, this is why I think he's so awesome he doesn't need to rely on boots but don't get me wrong if you got a pair of apex boots to put on this guy so that he can move four and then he can teleport um, that's just gonna be awesome because those apex boots are gonna give him attack anyway and that's what he's going to want obviously you're gonna try to roll some skill on that with him for him hell with him too this guy definitely wants his skill but think about what this does. This is a pretty big, uh, this does 0.3 AoE damage to enemies within two block radius. And steal one buff. The steal one buff part is huge because, like I've already proven by running, um, am I going to forget her name too? Am I going to forget her name too? My goodness, come on. The other chick that steals buff that runs with, Freak! How could I forget her name? Damn, that's two for two. She have freaked out. Uh, Furry can steal buffs. I've already proven how valuable that can be um, because in some of these maps where we have to just fight overpowered enemies with overpowered buffs, like, oh, I don't know, um, ignore 70% of damage to you. Um, this guy can steal one of those buffs, just like Farik did for me a few times, and she has gotten me through some level 65 content. So stealing buffs is huge, and this is an SSR character that can finally steal buffs on top of everything else he already has as a cutthroat killer. So please, nobody overlook this. This whole steal one buff, if you land a crit and apply one extra strong debuff, that's effing huge. All right, And this guy, he can do this, he can hit multiple people with this, and he can trigger his assassination ability off of this as well, because... Obviously, he's going to get a stack for everyone he does damage to. Um, two blocks around him, you can do damage to quite um, a few enemies around you. I also don't know, um, this is two blocks. If you put the converter on him, um, yeah, because he is a sword saint, this guy can use the converter. Uh, so I need to get another converter, like ASAP. Actually, now I'm going to need three of them. Uh, I'm going to be aiming for that. I'm assuming this guy with Converter dropping Eclipse can just do some gnarly stuff and he can uh, trigger his assassination ability that much faster and get to act again, kill somebody off, and then retreat. That's ultimately what you want him to do. So with Eclipse, uh, there's a whole build just for that, especially if you got the Converter. 
And then obviously, um, I don't know which one of these I'm going to run yet. They both, the key stats for them are attack and skill. I, I honestly don't know which one I'm going to settle in. I'm going to be trying both of them. So if anybody out there has any, um, any insight on that, on which one of these classes you want to end on with him, I'm all ears. I'm going to be investing the rune stones in him anyway, so I can play around with this eclipse thing, maybe a converter. Um, and then obviously I can still do some stuff with star stab and maybe an extreme magic bow. But for now, I'm just messing around with the Seductress Dagger just to kind of see how and when I can get um, a bunch of fixed damage and how far that's going to take this guy. Um, oh, the other thing is, I can tell you guys right now, if you put the Blood Sword on him as a Sword Saint, he's going to be able to do fixed damage off of um, you know any of these AoEs that he throws, just like Sakura can. And remember, this guy can stack his attack up really high because he can hold seven stacks. So don't forget to try to take advantage of that. You know, you have six stacks on you. You're getting, what, 3% per stack. You're getting 20% to all your stats. Um, your fixed damage is going to do that much more because it's based off of your attack. So the Blood Sword um, hunting can be very good on him um, with the Sword Saint uh, skill. Or not skill, the class, right? The Sword Saint class is going to let him either use that blood sword or the converter either or they're both going to be fantastic with him and obviously going over to otherworldly prince he's going to be using bows and stuff i'm using the seductor stagger for now but i can't wait to throw an extreme magic bow on him to see what he can do with that there is also the bow that increases his range by one if anybody's messing around with that please let me know how that turns out for you but this is what i think of this character the funny thing is, I just pulled Zarita too, off of like the last banner, and I got Sigma as well, so I'm like assassined out over here. Um, in a nutshell, I will tell you how I kind of um, am rating them right now. Uh, how do I put this real nice and simple? And this is IMO everybody, just my personal opinion. I built uh, Zarita a little bit just for Guild Wars and stuff like that. But I don't know why I would build Zarita if I have um, Omega, who kind of does the same thing as Zarita, but doesn't have to kill off half of his troops. Um, I just think he's awesome, too. Of course, you do need Zarita to get um, his bonds awakened and Farik's bonds awakened, too. And that's why I pulled for a Zarita. You know, but then between Omega and this guy, I really have to run them uh, to see what I think because I'm not really done running Omega yet either. He's at 4,000 um, total power. So maybe I will do a video later on comparing him. I can also swap his gear out and put it on Rainforce and see how he does with it. But pretty much my personal opinion is I'll take Omega over Zarita because he doesn't have to kill off his troops. He can still attack... Uh, the enemy hero directly, he can still get around guard directly, and he does have a way to vanish and um, you know teleport away from the enemy and get into safety, which is very important for a uh, assassin. But now we have Rainforce, and not only can this guy teleport out of combat, but Rainforce can move up you know nine blocks and attack somebody with that skill that lets him move up as far as his skill range. So, you know, and his other, his Eclipse ability, it also lets him move up and teleport and then use his Eclipse. So, the fact that he has movement built into his skill kit like that, I really think that gives him the edge. And the whole assassination ability is just gnarly. So, I will be running Rainforce, I think, over Omega. But I'm just not sure yet. Nobody quote me on this. It's just IMO and it's how it's coming together, people. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave me some insight. Leave me your thoughts. Let me know what you thought. Everybody have an awesome day. I hope you pull all the assassins that you want. And yeah, that's right. Merry Christmas to everybody too. I know that's coming. Mobile Gamers Unite. Peace out, everybody.